Regarding weak and very weak hadith, then by the unanimous consensus of the scholars, these cannot be used to base our theology on. Some scholars were a bit more lax about taking weak hadith in the performance of some voluntary acts of worship, but there is no difference of opinion regarding the inadmissibility of using da'if hadith for aqidah, for theology. Therefore, any hadith that is weak regarding the Mahdi or regarding anything else of our theology cannot and should not be taken as a source of our beliefs. With this prelude to the actual science, the question that most of you might be asking is, how exactly do I know as a layman if a hadith is sahih or da'if, is, is authentic or not? Well, to be very realistic and frank, there simply has to be an authority that a layman takes as his or her reference point. In other words, for the layman, there has to be an element of blind following. Of course, this rule does not apply to Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. These two books, Bukhari and Muslim, are taken as authentic and each and every hadith in them, the layperson need not ask anyone else about them, they are authentic. But this cannot be applied to any other work of hadith, including the four Sunan works, the Sunan of Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi and An-Nasa'i and Ibn Majah. No doubt these four books are, for the most part, more authentic than the other books of hadith besides the two Sahih works, yet there are in these collections some ahadith which are not authentic, particularly the Sunan of Ibn Majah, it has a significant corpus of weak and very weak and even uh, some fabricated narrations. So the question arises then, the average layman has to follow an authority because he doesn't know how to analyze the hadith himself. Who should he follow? This is a question that each and every person needs to decide for himself if he wishes to have a reference point for hadith. Just like every layperson needs to find a scholar or a few scholars whom he takes as his reference for fiqh, similarly, he should try his best to trust some of the specialists in hadith. And of course, the greatest scholar, or I should say of the greatest scholars of the past, known as the Khatim al-Huffad or the seal of the hadith masters, is al-Hafidh ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, who died in the year 852 after the Hijrah a great alim and a great muhaddith and he is the author of the probably the most important in fact it is the most important explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari Fath al-Bari and not just of Sahih al-Bukhari it is the most important and authoritative explanation written on any hadith book at all and there are many other scholars that are famous past and present of the ones who died middle part of the last century is Sheikh Ahmed Shakir. Also in our times recently, Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin Al-Albani has done much work in hadith and in my humble opinion and the opinion of the vast majority of scholars as well, his work is of extremely great benefit. And of course the point being the more that one studies the sciences of hadith, the more one can judge by himself who he is qualified to take hadith verdicts from. With regards to the sources that were used for this series of lectures about the Mahdi, then I would like to state that I personally have checked the hadith isnads of almost all the hadith that have been quoted. And I have also looked at the verdicts of the famous hadith scholars of the past and present. And I have benefited immensely from the verdicts of al hafidh ibn Hajar and uh, Sheikh Ahmed Shakir and uh, Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani. And I must mention particularly a work that I benefited from immensely and that is a master's dissertation presented to Umm Qura University regarding the ahadith of the Mahdi. And this researcher basically compiled all of the ahadith about the Mahdi from the Sunni sources and did an exhaustive analysis of each and every isnad of these ahadith. And one of the benefits of dissertations in general is that it is not just the individual opinion of the researcher, but rather a dissertation reflects the opinions of the researcher, his advisor, and also the defense committee, all of whom are specialists in this case in the science of hadith. The dissertation in question that I used is entitled Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadhar Fi Law Al-Ahadith Wal Athar Al-Sahiha, which translates as the awaited or the expected Mahdi in light of the authentic ahadith and statements of the companions. And it was submitted by Dr. Abdul Azim Al Bastawi in the year 1398 of the Hijrah, corresponding to 1978. And I also benefited from other books of hadith and the explanations of these books and the books dealing with the signs of the Day of Judgment. And it is my methodology that every single hadith that is quoted in this series of lectures is authentic unless I state otherwise. And in Allah, we put our trust.